Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 30 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's explore Drum Machine Designer, which is Logic Pro's included drum machine meta instrument. And yes, you heard that right. I said meta instrument because Drum Machine Designer itself is not an instrument plugin. Instead, it's a front end interface that allows you to interact and control and manipulate other instruments, other plugins, other routing contained within the Drum Machine Designer patch. To open a Drum Machine Designer patch, let's open the library using key command Y. And with the library, focus on the setting field of our channel strip in the inspector. Let's go ahead and navigate to the electronic drum kit sounds in the library. And from here, there are many, many, many different kits for you to use with Drum Machine Designer. I'll go ahead and load the 808 Flex patch. And once loaded, we see Drum Machine Designer loaded in the instrument slot in our channel strip for our track. There are also a number of plugins that have been loaded onto the channel strip. And if we take a look at the track in the tracks area itself, you may notice this rounded rectangle with what looks like an arrow. If we click on this rounded rectangle, we open what is called a track stack, which is something we'll be exploring in the series very soon. Let's reduce the view a little bit. And look at that, we have what looks like an individual track for each element of our drum kit. And if we open the mixer by using key command X, check it out, we have this arrow right here as well that we can close and open. And we have a channel strip for each kit element as well. So we're digging into the weeds quite a bit. Let's just close things up. Let's go ahead and open up Drum Machine Designer by clicking on the meta instrument in the channel strip. All right. So we now have what looks like a drum pad. We have individual kit elements spread out across different pads. And we have several pages of pads that we can work with. And we can use up to 48 different pads across Drum Machine Designer. Each kit piece on our drum pads is assigned to a key on a musical keyboard. So if we get out the musical typing, we can see right on the drum pads themselves that kick number one, the input is assigned to C1, our snare is assigned to D1, the rim is assigned to C sharp one, and so on and so forth. So if I go up the scale on my max keyboard, we will hear each of these drum sounds on each corresponding key. I'll bump down the octave to C1 where we start. Let's take a listen. Awesome. From here, we could easily start tapping in our own drum performance with Drum Machine Designer and the musical typing. Let's move Drum Machine Designer and let's just press record and I'll just tap something in real quick. Check it out. With the 808 Flex main track selected, once I hit record, I was able to use my musical typing to tap in a beat onto this track lane. And from there, we can continue crafting. I'm actually going to get rid of this region. Let's close the musical typing. I'll open the step sequencer. Quickly here, let's just move this out of the way. Let's open the pattern browser and select a drum pattern for our 808 Flex kit. And we'll work from there with this beat. Awesome. All right, so the top half of Drum Machine Designer is for the individual pads and kit pieces that make up our Drum Machine Designer patch, while the bottom half of Drum Machine Designer provides us with controls to manipulate the sound of our kit as a whole, as well as provide us with individual kit piece controls. Going to the upper right-hand corner of Drum Machine Designer, we can change the bottom half controls to that of our kit controls. Kit controls are smart controls that provide us quick and easy access over the audio effects on our channel strip for our kit as a whole. For example, if we wanna add some reverb to this kit sound, we can go right down here and enable this reverb for our channel strip. In this case, will be the platinum verb. We can see it's been enabled in the channel strip. If I go right back down and disable it, we can see that the plugin has been turned off and back on. And then we could dial up some reverb just by adjusting this one control that adjusts both the dry and wet sliders in the output section of the plugin. So check it out. If we set this all the way back down to zero, Let's hit play and then dial up some reverb.
Again, every audio effect on this channel strip on the main track impacts every kit piece in the kit. So as I dialed up the reverb, we heard every kit piece have more and more reverb applied to it in the mix. The same could be said for any of these other controls. So let's close Platinum Verb and let's just play around. But well, we can also change our smart control focus in Drum Machine Designer to individual pad controls, either by clicking on this pad control button halfway down, or by clicking on individual drum pads. Cool, so we have these smart controls for the individual kit pieces with which we can add distortion or play with a pitch or anything else. But take notice when we select a drum pad, now we have buttons for both a quick sampler main view and also a quick sampler detail view. That's pretty interesting, right? We have a sample view of this kick sound with which we can adjust the beginning and end of the sample. We can add a fade, just like everything we could do in Quick Sampler, plus detail control over pitch, the filter, amp, and more. And take notice, as I click on individual drum pads, the right-hand side of the inspector is updating to show us different channel strips for each of these kit pieces. And that's what we're talking about when we say Drum Machine Designer is a meta instrument. If we expand our track stack, we have all these different track lanes. And if we open the mixer, we have individual channel strips for each kit piece. And each channel strip has its own instrument with Quick Sampler, with its own effects. So if we click on our kick drum pad here, let's go to pad controls. If we add some distortion, oh man, check that out. So we're affecting the fat effects on this channel strip. If we play around with reverb, we're sending this kick to a reverb auxiliary channel strip that's further down in our mixer. And we're gonna explore all these aspects of the mixer very soon. But the point is, is Drum Machine Designer itself is not an instrument. It's just an interface that allows us to work with the individual instruments and controls for all these different subtracks and channel strips. In fact, we can choose a completely different instrument for our kick by selecting the drum pad for the kick. Let's go over here to the library and we could choose a completely different kick sound if we wanted. So maybe this blazing hot kick instead. Cool. Or we could choose maybe a vintage electric piano. And now the drum pad and smart controls have been updated in Drum Machine Designer to something other than a drum sample. So things can get pretty interesting really quick when working with Drum Machine Designer. Check it out, we have a B3 organ now. And we can go around reassigning all these drum pads if we wanted. But let's keep things simple and let's just stick with our 808 Flex kit for the whole drum kit. Just need to make sure to select the main track for the entire stack. All right, so now let's go back to the 808 Flex. From here, we can do a whole lot with Drum Machine Designer. First, if you want to sample any kit piece, instead of playing it on a keyboard, you can just click on the icon of that drum pad to hear it. We can also mute or solo individual kit pieces, as well as mute the entire kit as a whole or solo. You can reassign the icon of a kit piece by right-clicking on the icon or holding control and click to choose a new icon. We can reorder kit pieces just by clicking, holding, and dragging a kit piece over another to either reassign kit pieces to different keys or just purely visually change the way they're ordered. If we go up to the setting dropdown right here, we can choose. Do we want to reorder the pads only visually so we're not changing the fact that the kick is on C1, but we're just changing its placement within Drum Machine Designer? Or do we want to change which kit piece lives on which key on the keyboard? So if we now switch the snare with the kick. All right, so now we're swapping the kick and snare on C1. Now the kick is on D1, snare on C1. We can move kit elements from one page to another just by clicking, holding, and dragging to an edge. Now we could swap maybe kick one for the sub kick. We can move kit elements in between pads 
just hovering our mouse till we see this highlighted line between two pads. So if we take a listen to our kit with the sub kick in place and some of these changes, However, I'm going to guess anybody who's interested in drum machine designer are most interested in how to load your own samples, your own sounds into drum machine designer to start programming and performing with. Well, honestly, it is super simple. Let's close the library and move drum machine designer and let's open the Apple Loops browser. And maybe I want to load this angelic solo snare onto an empty pad in drum machine designer. Well, we can just click, hold and drag directly onto a pad to add the sample. And check it out, we now have this angelic solo snare on our kit. We go into the quick sampler main view. We can adjust our sample length, beginning and end. And let's get rid of this loop. And we can take a listen. If we open our track stack for our drum kit and take a look, we now have a track lane and a channel strip with quick sampler loaded for the sample that I dragged in. We can also replace an existing sound in Drum Machine Designer just by dragging onto an existing drum pad with which we'll replace this sound. Cool, so we now have our B-Sides cut snare. If we take a look in the tracks area, there's our track lane, there's our channel strip, or we can just drag directly onto a track header to replace the sample. All right, so now there's our 80s power pop snare living on E2. And once again, we replace the sound that was living on that channel strip and track lane. But maybe you have a loop or a sample that you want to quickly chop up and place across Drum Machine Designer. That's really easy as well. Let's drag in this drum loop right here. And just like with Quick Sampler, Let's drag this loop over to the track header section of the tracks area and let's select Drum Machine Designer from this drop down menu. And check it out this drum loop that I have here. Is now sliced up and spread across the different drum pads. And we can see a track stack has been created. Each slice drum sample has its own track lane in the tracks area, as well as its own channel strip in the mixer with its own quick sampler instrument. And if you take a look at the track lane here, we also have a MIDI region with no events spread out across each of the different drum samples. So if we hit play, I'll solo this track. Not that you have to stick with this region, it's just a quick and easy way to hear each of the samples play back in succession. Or let's say you have multiple drum samples that you wanna load. So let's drag in drums number two here into the tracks area. I'll select it. I'll enable slicing mode for flex. And I'm gonna right click or hold control and click on the region to slice up the sample by transient marker. So now I have essentially a whole bunch of samples that I wanna load into an instance of Drum Machine Designer. So let's zoom out. Let's select all our samples. Let's drag them into the track header. And from the dropdown, let's select Drum Machine Designer. Logic is now going to bounce each of these regions in place, creating a new audio file placed across each drum pad in Drum Machine Designer. We can take a listen. And what's really cool is if we select this sound here, we can see that the channel strip's been updated in the inspector. I'm gonna load an instance of Chromaverb and I'm just gonna lay a whole bunch of reverb on this sound just so we can hear it. If we take a listen, we can choose to resample the sound. Logic is going to bounce the sample into place, take that bounce and place it on a new drum pad. We can see resampled. And we resampled the sound through Chromaverb to its own designated pad. If you've landed on a kit piece that you want to save as a sound, as a patch, 
where you just select that kit piece, open the library, and then go down to save. And we can save this as resampled pad one. As noted under this new category of user kit piece patches. And the same goes for this entire kit. We can just hover our mouse next to the setting slot, click, and then save. And we can save this as our resampled kit. And there we have it under user patches, resampled kit. Lastly, if you want to be able to perform the individual kit elements as their own pitched instruments, for example, maybe our sub kick here, if we select that sub track within the track stack, we can do exactly that. Let's bring up the musical typing. So I can record this directly onto this track lane. And now we have these two note events recorded to the sub kick track lane and will be performed with these pitches as its own instrument. Or we could split up this existing performance onto the individual subtracks of our track stack. Let's right click, go down to convert, and let's separate our pattern region by kit piece. All right, so now we have an individual region for each the kick, the snare, the hats, toms, and anything else. And if we hit play, let's open the step sequencer for the hats. Let's choose note, right click, and let's randomize the note, and let's take a listen. Honestly, it is amazing what you can do with Drum Machine Designer, whether it be using an existing patch that comes with Logic Pro or dragging in your own loops and samples to slice up and use for your productions. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.